As General Secretary of the National Council of Churches, I'm grateful to the Council's Committee on Public Education and Literacy for raising awareness of the need for and the importance of public education reform in this country. The 37 denominations that make up the National Council address a number of pressing social issues, such things as racial discrimination and poverty and the lack of affordable health care. But no less important than any of these is the need for high quality, universally available public education. I'm really astonished by the level of demonization that's occurring in our country uh, related to teachers uh, on two levels. Number one, many of us are the products of great teachers and many a, when a teacher enters the the schoolhouse each and every day he or she enters that house um, expecting to make an impact not expecting to make a high salary not expecting to ruin the life of a child but to give all that they can give to make the life of that child better well we're in a in a sort of a strange historical moment in terms of education particularly public education uh, no Child Left Behind, which was uh, George W. Bush's uh, law, which w won the overwhelming bipartisan consent of Congress when it was passed in 2001, uh, created a, a, what I consider a timetable for the destruction of public education. So this sets the scenario for delegitimating public education because public education can't meet an impossible goal. Very few schools will say at the, by 2014 that 100% of the children are proficient. This is the No Child Left Behind scenario, which has demoralized many people. And then we get Race to the Top, which is the Obama administration's signature initiative, which is many people in education refer to as No Child Left Behind 2.0, or No Child Left Behind on steroids. In order to qualify for almost $5 billion in economic stimulus funds, uh, the states uh, had to do certain things. And this was at a time when the states were terribly strapped for money. They had, one of the things they had to do was to agree to evaluate teachers by test, the students' test scores. This turns out to be even worse than No Child Left Behind because it targets teachers and says that if scores are low, it's because the teachers are bad. That's the implication of evaluating teachers by their students' test scores. So if um, children don't speak English and they get low scores, the teacher's to blame. If teachers, if students don't come to school regularly because of whatever their problems are at home and or in their personal lives, they'll get low scores because they didn't come to school and their teacher's a bad teacher. Uh, if children are homeless and they move from school to school and they get low scores, it's the teacher's fault. Teachers across America are feeling demoralized, angry, uh, and I think they justly feel uh, that they are being blamed for conditions beyond their control. And we now have seen a number of districts that have fired the entire teaching staff of the city. Providence, Rhode Island just fired every teacher in the city. Uh, and they will be able to pick and choose who they want to bring back. When you see schools that are uh, terminating a large percentage of their teachers, they're not, o not only losing the thought leadership within that school, they're also losing the community equity. Um, because our, our schools are central parts of many uh, communities. What they don't understand is the overwhelming majority of teachers are working as hard as they know how. Uh, we've had studies done of, for instance, of bonuses, merit pay, and they, they always fail because the teachers, whether they get a bonus or they don't get a bonus, they get the same results. Why? Because they can't work any harder. There's a lot of debate around anti-union, pro-union. I think if the teachers' union were the problem, the schools in the South would be much better where you don't see as many collective bargaining agreements. But that's not the case. When I hear the uh, attacks on collective bargaining agreements, I hear attacks on the very fiber of our democracy. And so we have uh, people doing the uh, most important work of society, being uh, abused, uh, shamed, humiliated. The best nations in the world would not dream of bringing in a non-educator as either a teacher, a principal, 
or a supervisor. If you look at the nations that have the best school systems that are generally recognized as great school systems, they put a very heavy emphasis on credentials. Teachers are well prepared. Uh, they have t lots of time to uh, practice their teaching before they become full-time teachers. And once they're full-time teachers, they're given a lot of autonomy in the classroom as to how they teach. Uh, and they're supervised by experienced principals who themselves were master teachers. They support them. So it's not a matter of uh, asking the question of who can we get rid of in order to make the profession better. They ask the question, how can we provide the additional supports so that our teaching core as a whole is better? Somehow what we've lost is the, uh, the belief that teaching, in fact, is a profession. And we see more and more places, more and more states passing laws to make it easier to become a teacher, alternate certification where you don't need any training. I think we've got to readjust the, the narrative around our teachers in our country. These are our heroes and our sheroes, and we've got to provide the supports necessary. And we've got to make it so that every child who sits in the classroom one day has an aspiration also to be a teacher. And yet we're using this data-driven approach to things that really should be matters of human judgment. And uh, it's, it's corrupting. Each child has special sacred gifts which need to be nurtured. And all children are special and precious in God's eyes, which means that a system in which some children have access to excellent instruction while others don't simply is unacceptable. Let us together affirm the value of educating our children, each of them and all of them.